What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. It's crazy to think that there was a time when being addicted to buying DVDs was kind of a thing to to hoard, to collect. Now that streaming services exist like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and iTunes, uh, just way more convenient. The thing that like I dreamt of being a uh, reality back when I was spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on DVDs every week uh, that, you know, maybe I wouldn't need to collect them, especially DVD where it's like, you know, the, the technology got better. Blu-ray, now there's 4K Blu-ray, uh, but like now I can't even imagine buying a physical Blu-ray disc. I think I own Fight Club on Blu-ray, and uh, that's because it was a gift. I don't think I actually own any Blu-ray. Closest I get to purchasing a movie now would be, I have a few on iTunes, a little collection on iTunes, but having just your basic subscriptions to you know Hulu and Netflix and maybe HBO... You're going to get like, tons, tons of options, uh, so many good movies. Uh, but my DVD addiction started, I got my first DVD player. It was like around 1999, 2000. I was working at the movie theater uh, and, you know, was getting back into, kind of getting into movies more. You know, growing up, loved movies, would have the dubbed VHS where you had like four movies on one uh, VHS tape, uh, you know, renting movies from Blockbuster and, and Video Depot and dubbing them over or, or you know, you get the, the trial one week free or weekend of HBO and you just record all of your movies and you found your ways to get movies back then. Uh, but I got my first DVD player, bought it at the Costco that was across the street from the theater I worked at. And the first two DVDs I got were Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon and American Pie. Um, <clears throat> both, I think American Pie culturally uh, was a little bit more culturally relevant uh, as far as at least creating the term MILF. Uh, but Pie Fucker, I guess, would be just kind of a movie that I have not gone back to revisit, but I remember watching a million times. Uh, but those were my first two DVDs I got. I was living with my girlfriend at the time. I'd just been kicked out of the, my house, uh, which I was planning on moving in with a friend of mine, but didn't work out, so I moved in with a girlfriend and was collecting DVDs. Later, broke up with that girlfriend and had to uh, rent my old room back from my mom. She made me sign a contract uh, and pay like uh, 300 bucks a month for a room that, didn't really have good air conditioning, uh, but I hated being there anyway, so it's kind of a stepping stone onto uh, moving in with uh, a different friend. But uh, I was working at the movie theater all along this time. Got a second job working at Blockbuster as well, so I had access to a lot of movies. I saw everything that came out in the theater and would usually buy the DVD when it came out because usually DVDs were on sale on their release date. Uh, at like Best Buy or Circuit City um, and would buy a lot of those movies that I, I, you know, would watch back then. I remember waking up so many times, waking up at parties over at friends' houses, waking up the next morning to just the loop of the title screen over and over again. Uh, but later on, I moved to San Diego, actually started working for a Costco out in San Diego and had been... Uh, promoted to supervisor about a year in, so I was making a shitload more money, uh, like twice as much money as uh, or, or more than I was making at the movie theater and uh, was just dumping hundreds of dollars a week on DVDs, collecting like movies from like my favorite directors like Quentin Tarantino or Martin Scorsese or Kevin Smith. Uh, just kind of really going into buying like independent movies. I would go to Fry's Electronics with my friend Rochelle, and we would literally just blind buy DVDs based on their cover art. It's, and if their cover art, if they had those little wreaths 
It was a little, uh, this movie won an award at a film festival wreath. Like, if they had a bunch of those, blind buy. Uh, so a lot of movies I discovered just blind buying. Um, and it was fun. It was fun collecting movies. It, I, I would imagine it's similar to the joy you get as uh, somebody who collects comic books. I kind of got into comics a little bit in Denver. But, you know, kind of growing up that kind of... Uh, you know, exploring when you go into just a huge collection of of uh, content that you've never, like, you can't watch it all. There's not enough time, so you have to, like, select. Somehow you need to select movies uh, to watch. And I would just buy tons of movies, and I would have, like, my collection probably got around to a 1,000 DVDs, and I would have bookshelves uh, in my apartments, and just full of DVDs. It was like, I loved it. It was like my library. It was like rich mahogany and, and uh, leather-bound books, But uh, which one of the movies was, of course, Anchorman. But just categorized by director and, and genre, and like, I loved it. I loved it. And this was before Netflix, before any of that. There was nothing, nothing back then. Uh, but then once those things came out, like I started copying my movies onto a server so I could stream things to like my Apple TV or to a computer that I had hooked up to a TV or my projector at the time. Uh, so like right around the time Netflix was starting to do their thing, I was starting to kind of convert everything to hard drive. Uh, and it's weird, like so fast. I spent so many hours ripping all of my DVDs uh, to hard drive to like seriously, like literally five years later, just pay Netflix 10 bucks a month. And, you know, at the time you would get the DVDs in the mail, but it's like stream once streaming caught on, it was the beginning of the end. So now it's just like <coughs> over the years. I, I ended up getting rid of like when I moved uh when I moved uh from my apartment uh in in La Quinta or in La Mesa to uh my my condo out no I did I had them in it was when I moved from San Diego uh to Denver I got rid of like donated like 70% of them I had like at that time I had converted them all into like folders uh to look through instead of having the bookshelves just just make it easily more portable because uh, I was moving a lot at the time. Uh, so I had one one of those like 300 DVD binders left of movies that were like my favorites, but I never watched any of them. Like there was one night, Keith and I, before we both parted ways and moved, uh, we had like a DVD night, but like we streamed everything. Like it was movies I was holding on to for no reason, really no reason. So I ended up giving the rest of my DVD collection to Keith, uh, but I just donated to like Goodwill or uh, whatever the local, uh, you know, charitable organization was. I I literally donated probably seven hundred movies to uh, like Angel View or something like that. Um, I've, or Amvets, I think it was, out in San Diego. Um, but yeah, I don't own any hard DVDs anymore. Uh, I have a little a small collection on iTunes of movies, but most movies are available. I like, And if there's not, I, uh, maybe I could rent it or just buy it on iTunes. It's, you know, If I'm going to collect it in that way, then it's just I'll do it that way, man. I don't need... Like, I'm all about, at this point in my life, especially kind of a necessity is minimal. Get rid of as much as possible. Um, and with everything streaming, it makes it... Same thing with CDs. Like, at one point, I had all of my CDs stolen out of my car when I was working two jobs at the movie theater and a Blockbuster and had my car broken into. And ever since my CDs got stolen, I just... MP3s. Um, and now they're services. So it's it's a weird time. But my DVD collection was a pride and joy. Uh, but that's it. New episodes of this show come out daily. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Go buy my original artwork over at inspireddisorder.com and save 10% when you use coupon code INSPIRED. At Ray Taylor for me on all social media. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. Out!